everyone and welcome to our project, our watercolor project for this week. And we are going to be using what we've learned about the color violet to create this simple iris. Now, I shouldn't say simple, it looks simple, right? But if we were to do an opened iris, um, I think it would be a little bit too frustrating at first for many of you. And for me as well. <laughs> so I thought I would find one that was a little bit more, a little bit simpler in structure, but these are still kind of tricky shapes, right? So when we're painting this, um, I still suggest that you try to paint it without drawing at first. If you absolutely want to try drawing it, that's fine. Make a line drawing. Um, but I, I think it's really good practice to do this without drawing. It's so good for us to do this. Now, let me just grab a pencil here. So I want you to pay attention to a couple of things because these are very soft angles here. I mean, they're not straight up and down, although it appears very straight up and down. Um, these are at angles, okay? So to get these angles right, how I do it, I don't measure them, I don't do anything like that, but I look at the negative space in between, okay? So I'm trying to paint it close to the size of my reference that I'm looking at, and I'm really paying attention to the size of the spaces in between. This long triangle, for instance, right? And this triangle here in between, and this triangle here, right? And this little V shape that's coming into here. I mean, I'm looking at negative shapes as well as positive shapes. I'm really looking, okay? I'm really looking at light shapes and dark shapes, overall shapes. All right, so when we start to paint it, I'll be talking about this as we go. All right, it's such good practice to do this. And, and I think you are all discovering that it can give you beautiful results, right? Because we're really basing it on what our eye sees. And, and you know what? It works just as well and even better when we're doing it from life. So if we had a real iris in front of us, we could do an even better job because we see things more clearly. We see those shapes and colors more clearly. Now, once you have completed this project and you've tried this, if you want to go buy a beautiful iris and try to paint it, I highly recommend it. It's gonna be much easier to paint an iris from life than it is from a photograph because it's the, irises are very, um, they come at you, they recede, they curl, they tuck under, and those things can trick our brains, right? Especially in a photograph. This one's pretty straightforward. So we have here the leaf, we have the bud in two pieces with a little section here, right? The leaf, part of the stem, the bud, and then we have two sections of petals. So we've got background petals, and we've got this foreground petal. That's all we need to know. Over here, we have a petal inside of a petal, basically. So this all right here is one petal, and then this little piece in here is sticking out from inside. We don't really need to know this, but that's what we can see in this picture. There's a lot more going on with this iris than we can see. We only need to concern ourselves with what we see in the image, okay? All right, so for the palette, I'm just gonna use my Strathmore Visual Journal because this is practice work, and we've been doing a lot of good work in our journals. Um, and it's nice enough paper that if I ever paint something that's just really, really wonderful, there's nothing wrong with framing this paper. It's 100% cotton, okay? So we have our, um, I have that. It's plenty big enough for this so I can make a pleasing composition, right? And then, I have two brushes here. I have a number nine pointed round and I have um, a number three pointed round. These are both um, older sable brushes that I have. Um, so anything I would say like a size six or eight is fine. I actually don't have an eight in a good brush right now. So um, th that I would use for this. This is not, this one does not have the best point, but it'll work. But my number three, this is a Rosemary and Company I've had for a couple of years now and it's still in excellent shape. So we just want one that's a little smaller and one that's a little bigger, okay? And we may not even need the small one. We'll see, we'll see. I have a palette to mix my paints because we're gonna be mixing our violets. However, if you have some violets in tubes that you want to try, by all means, try them, okay? There's no reason not to. 
And I have here um, split primary colors from Daniel Smith. Um, and I should actually get my luminous palette out. I'm trying to, I think I left it at the studio. Oh, darn it. Well, I'll use it next time. So, okay. Um, so I'm going to be using my, my split primary palette, cool reds, all right, and warm blues. Maybe just a touch of cool blue. And down here, I'm going to be using cool blues and warm yellows and warm blues and cool yellows just to make my greens. I've got everything I need right here. There's nothing that, that I could want. However, again, if you want to use two violets, play with them a little bit and see what they need. If you swatch one out and see what you need to add to it to make it more similar to this color. All right. We're really going to focus on this color. And I'm going to swatch some of those out. So I'm going to just um, grab some fresh water and then I will be back to do some color mixing. Okay, so let's mix up some colors um, on a study page. And I think I've got a page. I'll use this page. Okay. So I've got a palette here, and I've got my split primaries, and I've got my reference. So I'm just going to put it here so you can kind of see it up at the top here. And I, I want to start with the purples. And so I'm going to start by making the clearest, brightest violet that I can because this is very clear and bright. And so I'm going to use my warm blue, which is French ultramarine in, in this set, and get plenty of it because I want a nice, strong mix. I don't have very good magnets on these pans, so they move around. Okay. And to make the clearest violet, I want to use cool red. So I'm going to take some of that, which is quinacridone rose, and mix it in. Now, just looking at it right now, it's already um, too much pink. So I'm going to add a little bit more of my blue. And a little bit more. And I'm going to swatch it. That is pretty close, pretty close. What I see is a little bit more of a coolness to it. So I'm gonna add just a touch of my cool blue, which is phthalo blue green shade and swatch it next to it. And I'm getting closer, I think, even a little bit more cool blue. That's about perfect. So this is very blue. It's got some violet in it, but it's very blue. And this is the color I'm gonna use. So I used cool and warm blue and a little bit of cool red, okay? So that's gonna be my mix for the iris petals. However, once I start getting into these more violet areas, I'll be adding a little bit more cool red to it to get some of the more violet colors, okay? So I'm all set for my flower. It's very blue. Now I'm gonna mix some of these greens and I'm gonna start with cool blue and I'm gonna add some cool yellow to get the most vibrant of the greens. Quite a bit of cool yellow, so I'm gonna add a little bit more. That cool blue is so strong. And that's pretty good for the lighter areas, but I have some that's even more yellow. So in that place, I'll probably just start with cool yellow and add just a tiny bit of cool blue to it to get that really bright acid yellow there and in this area, right? Then my green becomes quite a bit darker. So I'm gonna start with the same mix, so some cool blue but I'm gonna add warm yellow this time because it's a little bit darker and a little bit more natural. And again, because our cool blue is so strong, we have, to, we have to add quite a bit of the warm yellow. That's good, I think it needs a little bit more blue, but I think it needs warm blue. 
and then a little bit of cool yellow to brighten it up. So see how I'm just kind of going back and forth. Still a little bit more warm blue and cool yellow. I think that's pretty good. And then a little bit more cool blue for part of it. That's too much. Woo! You never know with that cool blue. It just gets crazy fast. Oh yeah, that's perfect. So you see how I'm just using the different cools and warms until I get a variety of greens that I see in my reference. All right, so I'm pretty well set here. And I know that I can mix every color that I need from this palette. So now I'm going to go back to my, back to a clean piece of paper. We'll just use this one here. All right, I'm all set. So I'm going to start with the petals. And I want to make sure I start with my lightest value. So I'm just going to use what I have here on my palette to map in that initial light area so I can put in my shapes. And I think I'm gonna put it kind of over to the right hand side and I'm gonna start at the very top. <clears throat> Let me just move this over a little bit. So I want you to see. Uh, there, okay. So I'm going to start up here at the top and I've got some of this color on my brush. My brush has a nice point on it and I'm going to start at the top with this very pointy shape. Kind of comes down and then it cuts over and then it comes up with this little sort of hook shape. and then comes down just a little bit. And remember, I'm looking at that negative space. Okay, and I'm just gonna pull this down. Remember, I'm not worried about the individual petals yet. I'm just looking at the overall shape. So I'm gonna mark in the negative shape that I see. And then it kind of curves down. Okay? And I'm going to keep going. And over here, on the other side, I come across, and I've got a little blip. And I've got this sort of shape that points in. And I need to make this a little bit higher. And it sort of curves down this way, a little bit longer than the curve on the other side. And it comes down straight. So I can sort of fill in this basic shape. I'm making it, it, it is a little bit bigger. So it curves down and it just keeps sort of going this way. comes down here okay and then I've got this shape over here it kind of comes in an arc Kind of comes up, down, and in, and then it comes down. And I think to about there. So I've got, I'm off. See how I'm off? 
Um, I'm really off. <laughs> Let's see what happens. And this happens, you guys. This, that's why I said this is not as easy as it looks. We'll keep it about like that. So this is not perfect by any means. So I'm off right here. So my, my leaf is going to be a little bit off here. And here's the thing. It is practice, all right? So I'm not gonna start over. And I suggest the same for you all. If you find that, um, if you find that you're off, just notice where you're off. And when you do it a second time, so actually this here should have come more over to here. So we'll just adjust, I'll just adjust it with my leaves a little bit and my leaves will enter at the right place. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, that's about as good as I can make it, I think, um, without starting over. <clears throat> okay, so I've got this first layer on. All right, now I need to allow this to dry before I start the green, because if I don't, the green and the purple will run together, and we don't want that to happen. So I'm going to let this dry, and then we'll come back and we'll add our greens in, We'll let that dry, and then we'll come in and we'll add the definition to everything. All right? Again, I see where I'm off, okay? And this is what happens when, when we paint this way. But I think you'll see in the end that just by pay, paying attention to colors, shapes, and values, we'll be able to re recreate this without being perfect, but it will look very much like this reference image. Okay, everybody, let me let this dry, and then we'll be back and continue on. Okay, so we're dry enough now to start, and I'm going to start by using this lighter green that we mixed, this acidy green. And I'm going to start by putting that in right where I see it. So if this comes down here, it would start about here. And it just sort of comes down and fills this little space. Okay, I'll keep it light. But it also comes down a little bit down in here to where this meets. And then I get this nice arc of light where it comes down here. <clears throat> now I'm going to pick up the next green that we made, which is a little bit brighter. And it starts up a little bit higher. And come straight down and it sort of mixes and mingles with that other green <clears throat> go right up to it but not over it Okay, so now I've got this nice gradation, right, that I'm also going to, to enhance later. But now I'm going to go into my brighter, darker green that we mixed. And I'm going to put this piece in. <clears throat> and so it starts about the same place. I'm looking at that negative space in between with a nice point. down. Oh, my hands are shaky, guys. And it comes all the way down. And it meets up right next to this.
comes kind of over and down to meet down here. And then I'm just going to fill it in. So it might not be totally smooth, this first layer, and that's okay because we're going to put more on it. Can you see how shaky my hands are today? Just one of those days. Okay, and I've got that shape in. It's a little bit different, but that's okay. All right. I also noticed that that green... <clears throat> is tucked in over here. So I can start where I see it. Kind of comes down. To here a little bit on this side all right then I'm going to fill in comes right up to here meets here okay so I've got my basic shapes in now and I don't want to do anything else all right until this is dry but I am going to clean up this a little bit here there okay so now we have our basic shapes in of the leaves and I'm gonna let this dry completely right before I do any more work on the leaves however the flower is now dry enough that I can go into that so I'm gonna mix up a little bit more of my violet <clears throat> so I'm gonna start with my warm blue add it in there okay a little bit of my cool red And then a little bit of my warm blue, I mean my cool blue, sorry. Just to make a darker version of what I have here, okay? And now I'm gonna go back to the petals. And now it's time to make the shapes of the petals. So I've got this on my brush and I'm gonna look here and see where the petal um, has a fold, where, where I see different values. And basically, I'm going to come in here and paint the outline of that that I see, all right? And then this side is darker. But then it gets a little bit lighter as it comes out. And I'm going to go in direction of form because I see some lines. And I'm going to paint those in there. Remember that we're going to go over the top with a glaze later. I don't want to see this really hard edge, so I'm just going to soften. All right, and now I've got that petal defined. Okay, this one here, the same thing, I need to define it. So I'm going to go in where I see it sort of tuck under, and I'm gonna use it as, to define the other edge of that pet, of the next petal. It kind of curves in around here. Being careful not to get into my green too much. And we're gonna put in some really dark color later, 
but I just want to make that edge di um, distinct. So do you see how I've created the different shapes that I see between dark and light? Now I'm gonna go up to this one and do the same thing. I'm not taking it to its darkest value yet, right? So it comes right here on the edge of this one. And it sort of goes over here until it disappears. And this one's quite dark, so I can just paint the whole thing did. There. I'm going to do that one more time. I got into it too much. Let me see if I can fix that. I don't know. There. All right, so I need to mix a little bit more of my blue. I'm making a mess today. <laughs> Aren't I? A little bit of my cool red. A little more. Okay, let me do that one more time because I really That's as good as I'm going to get it from my mistake. So I'm going to go back over here on this side now. And I need to define this petal that I see coming from behind. Okay, so now we have three sections to that petal. Now coming down here, I see that I need to make this even darker, so I'm just going to drop in a little bit more while it's still wet. There. So that's about as good as I can get right now while it's still wet like this. And I'm going to let this dry completely and then we'll come back and do a little bit more. Okay, so here we go again. Hopefully my hand's a little better. I don't know. I apologize, guys. I'm shaky today. So I want to mix up more of this brighter green. And so I'm going to take some cool and warm blue. And then just a little bit of cool yellow. Get me back where I want to be. And then I'll make it a little bit darker when we need it. So I'm going to start <clears throat> on this leaf here. And I notice that it's very dark along this edge, and then it just gets gradually lighter toward this other edge. And so I'm going to start on the darker edge. Go right up to the flower. And then just pull my darker paint all the way down that edge. And I notice that when it comes down and meets the stem, that it gets a little lighter. So I'm gonna rinse my brush and dry it off and just use a clean, damp brush to sort of mix them together. And then I'm gonna start gradually bringing it over to the other side. Grab a little bit more. And 
Just keep bringing it over. And I'm going in direction of form because the lines that my brush is creating are part of the texture. And then when I get all the way over to the other edge, I'm just going to pull my clean brush down. <clears throat> Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on this other edge, but I'm going to start with that more yellow green. And I'm going to start by defining the one leaf that we see that kind of goes over that more acid green leaf. Okay, and I'm leaving that little bit of light there. And I'm using this lighter green, not the total acid green, but the lighter one that we made. And I'm pulling that down. And then I'm going to pick up the darker green and I'm going to go right along the edge. Take a clean, damp brush and sort of feather them together, going in direction of form, pulling it down, okay? Now I'm going to take the darker green again and go over this other leaf. And it's pretty uniform. We've got one really dark area in the shadow there. So I've got a darker green that comes in over here, but I'll add that next. And I'm just pulling this green down in direction of form, this up and down movement. And I'm staying away from that left edge because it is a little bit lighter. Rinse my brush, dry it off, and then just soften those two together. So it's a little bit lighter on this side. By going in direction of form, my brush strokes become part of the texture. Okay. Okay, so I think I need a little bit more dark on this leaf. So I'm going to just go right back up. And bring the darker color along that right edge and then dry my brush off a little bit and then just feather them in soften okay so that's it for the leaves for now we'll put one more final layer on them but let's go back to our flower here and the final glaze is where we're going to add that hint of, of violet. But for now, we're going to define these edges again. So I'm going to pick up that bluish violet that I mixed. And I'm going to basically do the same thing I did before. I'm emphasizing the areas where light and dark meet one another. And then I just want to soften. I'm really emphasizing that edge. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm emphasizing cleaning my brush, drying it off a little bit and then softening, feathering it in. I'm 
So I'm creating contrast, right? And I'm going to do it again. Hopefully correct a little bit of this up here. <clears throat> and then again over on this side. So now I'm pretty happy with how this is looking. This is going to be darker down in here. So we're just going to take a little bit of our darker color and surround that more acidy green color and bring it down. And then use a clean, damp brush to soften just to make that a little bit more um, distinct, okay? So once again, we now have to really let this dry. Um, however, I think what I wanna do is while, before we put the glaze on, I wanna look at some of these, these patterns, and I'm not sure, I see some little, little lines on this petal, and I see a few on this one and this one, so I'm gonna add those in and this is where you could switch to your finer brush if you feel a need to. But I'm just going to, I've got this nice diluted bluer paint. And I'm just going to put in a few little lines as I see them in direction of form. And it gets quite a bit darker over here. And when we put our glaze on, it will unify that and soften it. I'm going to do the same thing on these other petals where I see it. Okay. All right, so now we'll let it dry one more time and then we'll be back to put our final glaze work on. Oh, you know what? I lied. <laughs> I'm going to go back to this darker green and I'm going to make it even darker. So I'm going to add in the opposite of green, which is, which is cool red since we're using cool red. You could use cool or warm, but since we're already using cool, I'm going to stick to that. Add some to my green so it just makes it darker. Okay, and then I'm going to look at my leaves and I'm going to say, where do I have a really dark green on here? And I see some, as I said before, right in this area. So I'm going to add some of that in. Where I see it. Right about there. Okay, and then I see some down here. Where these meet. Okay, just see that just a little bit down here on this edge. I want to put a little bit of darker green. And this other piece can stay like that. I see a little tiny bit here in between these two leaves where they go over one another. And then a little bit up here at the very corner of this leaf and where the petal goes over it and this will allow me also to sort of clean up this edge that's a little bit shaky
And then I just want to soften that very slightly. Okay, and then one more place, but I'm going to use the regular dark green. And I'm just going to go a little bit right in here. to show that there's a separation there. Okay. All right, let's let this dry and then we'll be back to do our final glaze. Okay, so it's time to put our final layers on our iris bud. And what I want to do is I wanna mix up some of these glaze colors. So I put my lid on my water really hard. Okay, so basically I want to mix up a brightish yellow green, so I might even have enough already here if I mix all of this left that's on my palette, yeah. So I want something that's really bright but very transparent. Remember, this is glaze work, so we want it to be very transparent. But at the same time, I also want some darker glaze to drop in where I need to. And I'm gonna make that a little bit stronger. I'm gonna take a little bit of warm blue to add it in there, and a little bit of warm yellow, just to give myself an option if I, if I want to add in some really dark green in certain places. For the blue glaze, I'm gonna make it very blue. So I'm gonna have a little bit of warm blue with a touch of cool blue to brighten it up. and then a little touch of my cool red to make it more violet, okay? So I've got that color, but I also want one that's a little bit more violet. So I'm gonna pull some of that over here. And by adding a little bit of cool red to it, I've created sort of a red violet just to drop in where I see those hints of it, okay? So we're gonna start by glazing the flower. And we're probably going to need to let that dry before we, graze, before we glaze the leaves. So I'm just going to take this blue that I mixed up, and I'm going to paint over the entire thing. And while I'm doing that, okay, what happens is, is it unifies all the layers we put before, and it just makes it a little bit richer. So I'm putting it right over on top. And see how it just unifies everything. Okay, and then I'm going to go to the next area. And I'm using a very light brush stroke. I am not, um, I'm not really dis um, disturbing the paper or the paint underneath too much. It's almost like this paint is gliding on top. And the darker areas, it makes darker. In the lighter areas, it makes a little bit richer and more glowing, and it unifies everything. So once I have put it on the entire thing, I'm going to pick up some of that more violet glaze, and I'm going to drop it in where I see that on my reference. And it's just sort of right down the center and a little bit to the right of this center um, petal. And I'll just bring it all the way down. So you see, it just changed it a tiny bit. I can even add a little bit more of the blue glaze right up in here. And a little bit on this side. I'm just looking at my reference, drawing my brush off and making sure I don't have any pools of paint to get blooms. So you see how that just sort of unified everything. Now, I see that I still am probably gonna wanna get a little bit darker with everything, so we will take care of that um, in the shadows. And, and we just are constantly adjusting this. So if you went a little bit darker than I did, you may not need to do this step. But we're gonna wait until this dries and we do the leaves to put in that darker area. So I'm gonna let this dry for just a minute. Okay, and I think I'm dry enough. So I'm going to go in with this brighter 
glaze that I made and I'm going to go over the entire leaf. I'm going to be careful not to touch the purple just in case it's still a little bit wet, but I'm bringing this lighter glaze over the entire leaf. All right, I'm going to come over here and do the same. And again, when it's a glaze, it makes the lighter colors a little bit more glowing and it makes the darker colors a little bit richer. And I'm still staying in direction of form and um, painting each leaf individually. It does make a difference. It might not seem like it would, but I have learned that it does. Now when I don't need my steady hand, it's come back to me. <laughs> so, okay. So while this is still wet, I'm gonna pick up some of the darker glaze that I, um, let me just put a little bit more on this leaf because it's. Um, I have the air conditioning on in my house, the air is really dry. You don't typically wanna to put two layers of glaze on, but. So while it's still wet, I'm just gonna drop in that darker glaze in the areas where I want it to be a little bit richer. Do you see how I'm just dropping it into that wet glaze? That gives a really nice gentle shading in case we need it a little bit more. Very, very gentle. I'll do a little bit more right up here. It's drying a little bit too much, so if that happens, you can always just soften it. And then a little bit in here. And then a little bit down here. There. Okay, so I said I was going to make this a little bit darker, and I'm going to. So I'm going to mix up some of that dark blue again, just a tiny bit of the cool blue, more of the warm blue, and a little bit of that cool red. And that was too much, so I'll add a little bit more blue. You never know. That's why you, you have to really be ready to make it a dance, you know, when you're doing your own color mixing. Um, some days go really well, and some days you gotta make it more of a dance. So I'm gonna pick up some of that darker color again, and this is dry enough where I can go in and just re-emphasize the darkest areas. I just want that contrast, the number one thing when, pe when people really start getting into painting and they've already kind of overcome the first troubles of um, water to paint ratio and um, just getting paint on paper um, is contrast. We just don't have enough contrast. So I'm gonna do that again here. Everywhere where I made that delineation, you know, between the petals, I'm just making that a little bit stronger. This one isn't as dark overall, but I'm just going to add a little bit of emphasis here because I really want, um, I really want those areas to be in contrast between the dark and the light. And whenever I do this, remember, we're always softening a little bit. Got to be careful here because that green is still wet. So if you're going to put some there, be very mindful or wait until the green dries if it if it makes you nervous. That's pretty dark in there. Just softening. I might add even a little touch more, just dropping it in so it's nice and dark. Because I want that um, differentiation there. There, and I think that's good. I don't want to do any more.
dry my brush. I'm just feathering into where I put that darkness in direction of form, just to soften the transition there. Okay, now if I need any more darkness on the green, I can just take one more look and say, okay, let's add just a tiny bit more right here. Tiny bit more right here. Teeny tiny bit right here. Very edge. There, I think that's pretty good. I'm always looking for contrast where I've got the greatest areas of contrast. I really want to make sure that happens. All right, so I think we're done. So that is our violet color um, project. And it's just an iris bud. Try it. Um, give it a try with either mixing your own or using the two violets that you have. And then if you want to, you can always try um, to do a full iris. I suggest from life. And then if you do that, please share. I would love to see it. All right, everybody, have a great rest of your day. And I will be back in a day or two um, with another lesson. And our next color is blue, which is going to be a little bit more extensive because blue is so, so important. Um, so I might even break it down into two, two videos, cools and warm blues. We'll see. All right, everybody, thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.